actually all of my political life, I was against the uh, Assad uh, regime. After July, he condemned me for what I said about President Bashar. So I want to be very clear again. All dignified people in the world, whether Arabs or Muslims or others with dignity, are very proud of the speech made by President Bashar al-Assad a few days ago here in Damascus. For me, he is the last Arab ruler, and Syria is the last Arab country. The reason that Syria is facing this crisis is not because of any bad thing which Syria has done or any weaknesses within its democracy or within its economy or within its human rights record. The reason why Syria is being threatened is not because of anything bad which she did, but because of the good which she is doing. So I say to you, citizens of the last Arab country, this is the time for courage, for unity, for wisdom, for determination to face these enemies with the dignity your president has shown. And I believe, God willing, we will prevail and triumph. Wassalamu alaikum. What do you make of the situation then in Syria and President Bashar al-Assad? Should he stand down? Uh, well, there should be a free election in Syria, which is uh, That's the coffee. That's not really possible I mean, it is. at the moment when the fight is going on. Do you support well, no, the Bashar al-Assad? The fighting isn't well, going on. Well, the truth uh, hasn't held that well. But do well, you still Well, Kofi thinks, uh, not only do I not support Bashar al-Assad, right. I never did support Bashar al-Assad. When you had just got down from the business of licking the backside of Bashar al-Assad... No, no. <laughs> Mr. Galloway is just back from a trip to Syria during which he apparently praised President Assad as the last Arab ruler. He's on the line. Good morning, Mr. Galloway. Yes, good morning. Is that what you were doing, praising him? Uh, well, I was making a very long speech, but if you read the Israeli website from which you've drawn that, that's certainly the plum that they took out of the speech. But I don't have any problem uh, about repeating what I said about President Assad, that his reforming uh, zeal, and his vision of Syria as a genuinely independent Arab country. Well, the fact is that Syria is ranked second lowest by the index of political freedom of all uh, countries in the world. I mean, that's hardly a, a record that one should well, praise, is it? That's, uh, that's absurd. That's absurd. Is it? Yes, yeah, absolutely absurd, yeah. What? And, and, and the fact that they do what they do, the Syrian regime does what it does, the fact that it uh, has a long record of arbitrary arrest, systematic torture, prolonged detention of suspects, all that sort of thing, unfair trials, well, is that all absurd? Well, it's just struck me as an odd form of words for a man who described President Assad's Syria as the last castle of Arab dignity. Please don't think that I'm on trial in front of you, Jeremy. You're no, not I'd, fit to be my judge. The I'd, people I'm not Bradford judging you, I'm just thinking the it's people, a very odd form of words. Well, Evidently, the people of Bradford West, who frankly matter to me far more than you do, uh, are the judge of what I say. We talked about an email, not your speech, when you talked about what well, a good chap Assad let me, was. I let me, about the email you let sent. Me. He turns up in Damascus. The man's search for a tyrannical fatherland never ends. The Soviet Union's let him down. Albania's gone. The Red Army's out of Afghanistan and Czechoslovakia. The hunt persists. Saddam has been overthrown, and his criminal connections with him have been exposed. But on to the next, on the 30th of July, in Damascus in Syria, appearing, I've given it all to you in a piece of paper, in front of Mr. Assad, whose death squads are cutting down the leaders of democracy in Lebanon, as this is going on, to tell the Syrian people they're fortunate to have such a leader. The slobbering Dauphin, who they got because he's the son of the slobbering tyrant who came before him. How anyone with a teacher of socialist principle can act or speak in this way is beyond me, and I hope, ladies and gentlemen, far beyond you and far beneath your contempt. Thank you.
And what about the contention that the news that we're getting about Syria is completely oh, yeah. false? I mean, that's a given, man. That's uh, an absolute given. Uh, we have on Sky, which is the British Fox News, every day for the last 10 days at least, they have led the news with Syria when neither the journalists nor most of the viewers know anything about Syria. They're still leading on Syria. I mean, it's a full court press, to use a, a basketball metaphor, uh, to try to bring down the regime, not because of any bad things about the regime, but because of the good things about the regime. Uh, and those good things are this, I quickly summarize. The Syrian regime refuses to accept that Israel can steal its territory and keep it. It refuses to sign a surrender peace with Israel like the other neighboring Arab countries have. It refuses to sever its relations with the Palestinian resistance movements, most of which are headquartered in Damascus and have been for decades. It refuses to sever its links with the Lebanese resistance, which is continuing to resist Israeli occupation and, uh, and infiltration of Lebanon. It refuses to uh, allow itself to be a base for the occupying countries in Iraq, and so on. These are the reasons they want to bring down the Syrian regime, not because of any bad things.